Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. Today's reading is episode 10, so the 10th house in the You Through the Houses series. If you're familiar with this series, you know that we're going through each of the houses one by one from an astrological chart and looking at its domain because it, each house covers particular aspects of your life. And we're looking at how that operates in your life, sort of what spirit has to say around that and advice spirit has for you in maximizing the benefits of the particular house. And in this case, the 10th house. If you're familiar with this series, you know the structure. But if this is the first time that you've come across this particular type of reading on my channel, there is a particular structure to this that is different to what I do more generally because there's an additional portion to it effectively. So we start with a very broad introduction. Then I move into a section that is about the astrology in this case in the 10th house. So it's what it means to have particular star signs in the 10th house and particular planets in the 10th house. Now to know whether or not this applies to you, you need to have seen your chart or you need to have your birth time, birth place and birth date and go to one of the sort of online astrology sites and look into that. So that's a way of finding that out if you're not an astrologer and you haven't had your chart done. If you are an astrologer, you'll probably skip this section because it's very high level, though if you want to listen into it and then add anything in the comments to enrich people's understanding, that's always very welcome. But it's just there if you do know those those particular parts of your chart and you're probably not an astrologer and you'd like to just get a very high level understanding of what that means. So if that doesn't appeal to you, you don't need to know that. It's not necessary to get something from this reading and it's not necessarily ever going to be reflected directly in the reading in any case because these are collective. You can jump straight to the timestamp which is talking about pick a pile or so that you actually choose which particular reading or readings you want to go to. So you don't have to listen to that bit, but it's there for those who are interested in it. And then we'll go obviously beyond that into the normal reading one by one. So before I, before I jump into the astrology section, I just want to make a note that I do occasionally in some of my, my videos, which is that I do do personal readings. If you are interested in that, I do that via an Etsy store. That's the only way to get a reading from me. I will never solicit it in a comment or a, a DM on Twitter or anything like that. So if anybody poses as me doing that, they're a scammer. Hopefully that never happens with my identity, but it may well have done by the time that you see this, even as I'm not aware of it at the time that I'm filming it. But I just want to make sure nobody's scammed. So you come to me if you want a reading and you will see in the Etsy store and the, the link to that is in my description box below and also on my about page on this channel, what particular types of readings I offer and so forth. What I do also want to say is if you do do that, this is just again for your protection. I have had experiences where people have signed onto Etsy as a guest and they've used something like their Apple ID and what can happen is you end up with a generated Apple ID relay email or something like that, that that there is no guarantee that if I message you from Etsy or I email you that you're going to get your emails or get the YouTube link if it's a video that, that you've chosen. So please always put your email address in the personalization box when you purchase so that I have a contact for you and we can certainly work out the best way to get your particular reading to you that way. But it just means I'm just worried that at some point I'm going to be in a situation where I can't contact someone so I can't really in all conscience take their money. I'm going to have to refund it and not do the reading. And they may not even know why because I haven't been able to contact them. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle if that's the case. So please, 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 if you are going to get a reading from me, put the email that I can be in contact with you in the personalization box so that doesn't happen. Okay, so thank you for, for bearing with that, but I just wanted to make that announcement. So now I'm going to move in, and it'll be in the timestamps, to the section that talks about the astrology. So as I say, if this is not of interest to you, you can go down to the description box below and skip to the pick a pile section where I'll go into a little bit more detail about what we'll cover in the readings before you go into your reading. So I've made some notes from my own sort of history and understanding of this, all the astrology sort of signs and, and indications and so forth, and also from reputable sites online. So I just tried to get the best distillation of both the signs and the planets 
in that way. So starting with the signs. If you have Aries in the 10th house, you're highly ambitious and focused on action and achievement. Part of your personal brand is about your career, is about being first in something or certainly being very active and very on point for what you're trying to do. You're a natural leader. If you have Taurus in the 10th house, your career and vocation is all about setting up the sort of lifestyle that you want. You can be a little bit stubborn about what you want to do and what that means, but you, you're a bit fixed about what your career or vocation should be. But you certainly can attract abundance to you and, and the good life to you through your 10th house. If you have Gemini in the 10th house, there's a very strong communication focus to your career or your vocation or your personal brand. You may well work in some form of communication media or somewhere where the mental agility and sort of changeable electric sort of energy of your mind comes to full focus and, and full flowering. You may be a bit changeable in your career energy as well. You may get bored with jobs. You need stimulation. Don't sort of go and do a job where it's sort of very routine every day because you're not going to want to stay there for a long period of time. You need to be able to think and have ideas and communicate. With cancer in the 10th house, there's a very strong family of security or emotional focus for your career. You certainly have an emotional need for security and stability and you will seek out those sorts of careers that provide that in the, in the longer term. If you have Leo in the 10th house, you're dramatic, you're charismatic, you could very well be into things like the arts, media, entertainment, performance. You don't have to be, but Le the Leonian being centre stage, there'll be something about you that stands out and certainly in your personal brand, but also probably in the sort of career choice you do or even just how you are within a work group. You're likely to be a little bit more flamboyant, a little bit more expressive and so forth than other people. And there's a natural leadership energy to you. If you have Virgo in the 10th house, there might be a focus on health or things that are very structured. So you could work in sort of health sort of things or environmental concerns, anything sort of earthy, or you could be an amazing project manager, project lead, you know, planner. There's a lot of structure around what you do and you're very strategic, but it is likely there's something sort of, as I say, very material about what you will do and very detailed. If you have Libra in the 10th house, you could work in the justice or legal system potentially or in academia, things to do with the mind, things about bringing things into balance, could have a very strong sort of social justice sort of approach to things. You want things to be fair in a workplace or in a career, very intellectual, great leader, you know, because you are fair and because you see both sides to any particular story. If you've got Scorpio in the 10th house, very, very intense connection to career. Scorpio tends to be very fixated on whatever energy that it's, well, whatever house that it's in. It's, you could go to the depths of things, you know, psychology, it could be something that you're interested in, forensic, detective work, stuff like that. And you can be a little bit intimidating in your sort of career and personal brand energy because of that level of intensity. If you have Sagittarius in the 10th house, you need freedom and personal expression. You, you don't want a career that is sort of very boxed in. You don't want to be seen as boxed in. You want to know that you can express yourself. You may have travel or creative related careers. Very big picture philosophy, big picture ideas with you. With Capricorn, you have it in its natural house because it, the 10th house is the house of Capricorn. That makes you a natural leader, a natural boss, a, a natural entrepreneur, likely to be in large organizations, power, politics, make money, very abundant. It, it's very much a I can handle and be part of the powers of the world type of sign to have in the 10th house. With Aquarius, you've also got a bigger picture sort of approach to this, but it's probably more scientific or AI or philosophical or very future oriented. You really want to make a difference and there's a, a spiritual thing, but it's it's processed through the intellect and through ideas. You know, you, you're sort of less likely to be focused on sort of individual healing, for instance, so much as a philosophical philosophical sort of approach that could heal many. So there's a big picture sort of future focused aspect to your career. With Pisces, it could be focused on psychic healing, spiritual careers, very emotional sort of focus 
highly, highly predictive, strong emotional connections. You may be a little bit shy. You may not really want the limelight, though if you work in fields where those sort of psychic or spiritual aspects are, you may find yourself in the limelight and have to have to deal with that if that's the case. So that's the signs. Then we go to the planets. So if you have the sun in the 10th house, you're very goal oriented. You want to be your own boss, very ambitious. You can over identify with your career though. Your life path can be very much connected to that and you need to make sure that's in balance. With the moon, there's also a very strong emotional connection and identification around your career, your vocation, your personal brand and a need for recognition and achievement. You could be very charismatic but you need a structured and stable life, you know, and you may change professions often because you're trying to find the best fit that you want to stay with long term because it emotionally nourishes you. With Mercury in the 10th house, you're very good with language and communication, excellent negotiator, could very well have multiple jobs or goals at any given time. You want stimulation, you don't want to get bored. In fact, anything but being bored in, in your career is, is important here. And a very strong sort of sense that you may do careers that are around communication in some way. With Venus in the 10th house, you're very charming, very respected. You may have many loves from afar who sort of watch you and have you on a pedestal. You do want to be recognized for your charm. And that can become a little bit too much worrying about what people think of you and how you appear and how your brand appears. For Mars in the 10th house, you might be almost obsessively organized, very highly career ambition focused, a bit like having Aries in the 10th house. You're very task oriented. You do need to be boss. You really don't want to or be your own boss at least. You can be competitive, but you're the ultimate self-starter. You'll work hard and you'll get things done. With Jupiter in the 10th house, you take charge with a pleasing and kind approach. So when you lead, it's, it's something that people naturally want to follow. You might seem lucky. People might get jealous of you, but you're more than that. What you actually do is, is talented and is, is warm and expressive, but people may get jealous. They might think, gee, things come easily to that person in their career. In fact, you're very ethical, you're very mature, and you're very resourceful. And if people got to know you better, they'd see that was what was making this apparent luck. With Saturn in the 10th house, you take career more seriously than most. You're very sort of structured on that. You're very aware of your role or place in an organization, in society. Could be conservative in your role or in your choices and a bit defensive if you make money about that wealth and that power and, and so forth. With Uranus, you identify with your career but only in the sense that you want to be really independent, fiercely independent, in fact, and you're constantly on the move with your career, trying to find that creative, unique sort of way of doing things. Very equality-minded, very fair-minded as well. Uh, and you could have sort of a bit offbeat careers or unusual careers if you have Uranus in the 10th. With Neptune, similarly, there's sort of like the, the unusual or the different. This is more probably around your arts or creativity or spiritual sort of approaches you have very strong intention and that sort of supports your career you know you know what your ideals are and those idealistic energies can work very well for you or they could make you feel too responsible for others you may need to get a balance around that if you have pluto in the 10th house you'll stand out you're unique you're different your, your ambitions are well developed, you're very transformative, you're able to change when it's necessary, very strong personal presence, very committed, very responsible. If you have Chiron in the 10th house, so Chiron often shows where there's woundings from childhood or early life, there might have been a need to deal with kind of like childhood rejection or not being seen to be good enough or part of the family sort of heritage or lineage in some way. So you get out of that a strong need to heal yourself through status and achievement, through becoming the thing that maybe you were denied that you were when you were young. So that's a very high overview, as I say, but it gives you some idea of the signs and planets in play in the 10th house, if you know your chart. I'm now going to move to the timestamp, which is around the pile choice. So welcome back to anybody who skip straight to the pile choice and thank you for sticking with me through that for those that wanted to hear the astrology. 
So I'll put down the numbers first. Some people just like that sort of visual and the number sort of reference to, to choose their pile or piles. You, of course, can go to more than one if you feel drawn to more than one. There could be sort of energies across more than one reading for you. Like other ones in this series, what I've done is I've taken the number 10 out of the four major suits to kind of broadly represent the elemental energy and so then also the signs that are covered by that element. So if you know what sign you have in the 10th house, it might help you choose, but you don't have to feel constrained by that. You don't have to think, oh, I've got Capricorn, I've got an earth sign, so I have to go to pile one. You don't have to. If you feel drawn to pile four, go to pile four. So that that is just one potential way. So I've got the four pile ones representing the earth sort of signs. I've got the 10 of discs from the sacred bee tarot. For pile number two, I've got the 10 of swords for air element signs and that's from the white fly tarot for pile number three i have the ten of wands for the fire signs and that's from the art of adventure tarot and for pile number four i have the ten of cups to represent the water signs and that's from the crystal unity tarot so those are the different tarots that are being used in these different readings that may help you choose if you know one of the tarots and you're drawn to that but as i say use whatever draws you and don't sort of feel like all oh, the ten of swords is, is difficult i'm not looking at this in the context of what the ten of swords means it's just a ten energy in an air sign similarly don't think oh this looks exhausted and overbearing that doesn't mean that's what the energy is going to be for pile three it's, it literally is just for the signs so it's just if that helps you choose but whatever it is whether it's the energy whether you always choose by numbers when you know what reading or readings to go to, what we're going to cover in this so that you know is we're going to start with a personal power and presence profile. And then we're going to have a look at how that is playing out in your life with tarot, sort of the key career and vocation energy, your personal brand and the impact of the external world on you. Then we'll have a look at how that's operating in the 3D and also some career creative and spiritual advice before we bring it all together. So when you know where you want to go, go to the timestamps below and I'll see you there. Welcome part one to your reading. So these cards are the kind of map of your sort of power, personal power and presence and brand that would be represented for your career, vocation, etc. with the 10th house. So we've got some career and money cards. We have some color energy, some sort of god and goddess energy and also some examples of success and the focus. There's two really clear areas here so I think we potentially either got people who cover both or people who are in one or other so one is all around the financial markets the free market and so forth both the success oracles that were drawn are from people who understood finance and we have growth here as well too and success will find you Adam Smith is credited with being one of the sort of proponents of the free market and laissez-faire capitalism so very much a philosophical imprint on how money is made in capitalistic sort of societies and so forth growth and so forth and would have potentially written and sort of advocated for it so some of you may be financially very astute and write about that or blog about it or influence around it others of you may work in the financial money markets or something that you do in your own business or in some way is about growth and about understanding competitive realities and how to negotiate because with Christine Lagarde she was a she well, is a consummate uh, negotiator and she's however a bit more it is about sort of free markets new markets and so forth but it's also about fairness so there's a balance between the unfettered side of the free market and something that is also about balance that allows growth in a responsible way and I think it's the balance also between what you can bring and grow yourself and then also what is unknown so it's sort of like we've almost got a kind of continuum here of financial and business savvy at one end is all the unknown just let it all happen at the other end there is negotiate these things understand the markets and so forth so there's something about you that in whatever you do for your career really understands the financial industry market area of your of your life it's very likely that you would have an, an earth sign in the 10th house if not potentially an air sign so there's a philosophy around it and there's communication around it and so forth you're definitely meant to be successful but it's partly your preparedness to be out on that tightrope between sort of 
negotiation and, and free for all around whatever it is that you do. And I think you're very able to do that. The issue for you with Freya and Mithras here is that on one hand, there is an irresistibility to you. you. You draw a lot of people to you. You draw a lot of energy. You draw a lot of success. Whatever you do, the, the, the importance of how you speak it, your, your actual presence around success and being an icon of success in many ways draws many people to you. But there is something in this continuum for you between what is completely laissez-faire and free and what is a little bit more around a bigger picture balancing where there is a risk that you could end up sacrificing yourself to some degree where you might end up trying to to fetter yourself to some degree or fetter a market in some way or whatever to to get the balance right there so i just think one of your tensions will be about how free forming and going into the unknown and then how much it is about sort of stable sort of stuff and a, and a broader responsibility to those who are drawn to you and, and who listen to what you have to say and I think it's interesting we have indigo and rainbow here indigo to me just on a kind of general color energy makes me feel of the crown chakra so getting downloads from sort of spirit and understanding and this is a highly spiritual thing Mithras is about the cycles of death, death and birth you know life rebirth connected to the Ouroboros all of that kind of thing so if it's not about you sacrificing, it's the vision to see the cycles of things. You can see the cycles and know when there is times for growth and when there's times that you need to sort of be a little bit more freeform, for instance. And rainbow suggests to me helping others and inclusivity and, and seeing diversity, diversity in, in material portfolios, diversity in, in how you express yourself, diversity in the people that you reach in whatever it is that you do. So you don't, as I say, you don't have to work in the financial markets. You don't have to be a writer, though many of you may be one or other of those. But whatever it is, there's, you, you really do balance that sort of stuff very well. And the only thing to, to keep in mind is not to, is to get the balance right for you as well. Because there is a side of you a bit that once you draw people in, you feel responsible for them. You may potentially have Saturn in the 10th house. You may have a deep sense of responsibility to others or even Jupiter a sort of sense of I really care about the impact on other people. The other thing that these colors, these talks about connected fairies in nature, there could be sort of something with growth for some of you that this manifests in something to do with the environment. So you may, your career and your personal brand and your vocation might have environmental aspects to it, I think. And improving your vision, I think this is really just about connecting to your inner knowing and so forth. But your, your sort of pattern your 10th house is about success is about material success big time it's about understanding the market or the industry that you're in and it's about getting a balance between responsibility to others and the kind of incredible success and growth that you can have just by taking your genius and running with it, 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 it that is the balance for you so let's see with a little bit more detail about it with the tarot so the first thing we're going to ask about is your key career and vocational energy then as i say we'll look at how that manifests as a personal brand and then we'll look at the impact of the external world on your 10th house so firstly spirit what for pile one what is the sort of energy of their career and vocation Okay, so I'm reading these a couple of ways. I'm reading them classically. I'm also reading them firstly for the sort of balance of major and minor arcana and the suits. So firstly, a lot of what you do is very personal. It's very much your vision, you, your kind of sense of philosophy, what you want to communicate and so forth, because we only have one major arcana card. Having said that, the major arcana card is the empress. So the way that you interact with others and the care that you take towards others is part of how you become abundant. You have great philosophies and great understanding of the market or industry that you're in, whatever it is, but your caring for others and the nurturing and the creation of something I think is maybe a legacy is going to be integral to your career, to what you do and to how successful you are. <clears throat> it's very, very materially oriented. We've got three pentacles and then we've got one sword. So this is not this is not the profile of somebody who 
even with the writing, which could pick up sort of like sort of emotional energy or whatever, it, it you aren't particularly emotional about your career. You, you care, you care and you care for others and you have a really sort of strong philosophy, really, really strong sense with the Ace of Swords there about justice and about fairness and about there being a philosophical clarity to what you do. But it's not, you're not emotionally attached so much to your career. You're kind of more philosophic about it and, and just material, just bringing things in and understanding the cycles that you're dealing with. And you have a good sense of the cycles of it. I think this is picking up the Mithras. Because with three pentacles cards, as I say, you know, it's sort of material sort of things, the financial markets, all of that kind of stuff very much aligns to you or a very good business sense anyway. But you sort of toggle between where you're planning with the princess of discs reverse. So that's like the page of, of pentacles reverse. You're planning for what you can bring in and the growth, like you're in a planning cycle. You're in the harvest cycle with the queen of discs. And that very much to me as the center card shows that you, you really are successful in what you do. And then you go into almost the, the sort of the, the decline before the new energy comes through. So I feel like you really see the cycles within a business. And there's something, so some of you may be, as I say, around the environment or something like that, because the cycles of nature could be very much what you, what you deal with. But equally, it might be the cycles of the financial market. It could be the cycles of anything that you are making money and doing a business with. But you're very in tune with that. You understand that abundance comes from understanding and going through those cycles and not being too afraid of them, just moving through that energy, embracing the unknown, knowing success is going to find you, knowing that once you've done that, there's almost a, like the wheel of fortune turning, a time where things go down so that new energy can come through. So there's something about your career and vocation that is about going through the cycles of sort of money or industry changes or environmental changes, but being in flow with that. And that's part of what makes you be able to, to understand, as I say, these, these characters would have understood that on a financial market very much so. So let's have a look at your personal brand as a result of that. Okay, so again, looking at this firstly in the, the spread of major to minor and so forth, we have we have two major arcana and we also have a court card. I mean, I wasn't so much looking at the court cards there, but like I, I feel because it's connected here that, that that is picking up external as well. I do think that there is a, your personal brand is very much seen in the world. You, how you do this and your understanding of it, it's very personal, it's very private, but your personal brand is very strong in the world very charismatic, very creative with the King of Wands. And there is a creative energy to this and an ambitious energy and to be seen, there, there is something there. But it's more around the broader philosophy, the structure of what you do, your understanding of the industry with the Hierophant, your understanding of traditions and, and you know, like this could pick up regulators and so forth. So the energy, as I say, of Christine Lagarde or Adam Smith, you, you do understand how to navigate that and to some degree with the devil reverse liberate when it's necessary so again it's like some of you might be in kind of politics and be around the financial sort of stuff there and around how do you have proper regulation but also the liberation it's there's there's definitely a push pull energy to your brand your understanding of that like when do you tighten the rope to get security and when do you need to let it go so that you can actually get the new growth coming through so there's something in the way that you're seen in the world connecting with big organizations, big picture issues like that, and being a liberating and creative force is part of it. You're also very much a iconoclast with the eight of swords here and with the devil devil reversed. You you do see you're you're veering a bit more towards Adam Smith as a general rule, the laissez faire end of it than Christine Lagarde, but she was also into the new as well too. There's something about your personal brand is about breaking through that which is not not needed or that which is stunting growth in whatever it is that you do, but also being able to, to be a responsible steward as well and be very, very pragmatic about it. Again, like the emotion energy, the only emotion energy we've had so far with cups is the seven of cups reversed. So it's sort of like it's not emotional to you. It's not personal. 
Like you, you just, it's it. You aren't the kind of classic business person who, you know, kind of goes through changes and then goes. It's none of this is personal. It's just business. And and I think it's very true of you. And I think people accept that because they see that what you're trying to do is liberate energy. And I think be inclusive. So it, you don't come across as hard hearted, but you. It's just not. It's just not your focus around the tenth house. So let's see the impact of the external world on you. So I just want to pull three cards to look at what the external world and, and characters in the external world and you know energies in the industry or whatever it is, how they impact your 10th house. Okay. So again, it, it, you're, you're really not swayed by anything. You're very strong. <laughs> Very strong, not not sort of like emotionally triggered, nothing like that. What happens in the general world with the full reversed here? You, you just take a very pragmatic view of it. You know, there are ups and downs. There are cycles in, in this. You know, if you were an entrepreneur, and it could be with this sort of energy, it'd be like you might have a multitude of different businesses and some of them aren't going to work and other ones are going to really rise. And you, you're kind of like, yeah, that's fine. I know what to do. I know how to liberate myself from any of the kind of squabbling that's going on in my industry or any of those sort of like you know petty competitions and I certain and you certainly here can negotiate you know how to to come through things with the seven of swords it can bring you know the difficulty that deals with people trying to steal from you people trying to be duplicitous so sometimes you have to deal with that but again you're very pragmatic about it sometimes you're going to have competition that is not particularly moral you're in you're in an environment, something that you're doing. There's a lot of a lot at stake, probably quite a lot of money at stake, or, or personal reputation at stake. So there's a little bit of that that you have to deal with, but you know how to deal with it. You you would say it's not my first rodeo. I know what I'm doing here. So I feel like part one, you you are very you're working very very well with your tenth house, and and very likely to be successful with it. So let's have a look at some three D sort of energies around at the moment. So we'll have a look at the heart code oracles around career, then finance, and then also your lifestyle as that impacts your personal brand and your vocation. So career energy first, because career is a very big part of the 10th house. Career on the big picture stage. Preparation. Victory. Yeah. Disapproval. Okay, so... Preparation, I feel this is you sort of like kind of going through the cycles, understanding the cycles, knowing when you when you sort of sow the seeds, when you when you sort of till the land, when you when you have your harvest, all of that kind of thing. You're you're very good at preparing. You you do not go into any sort of career discussion or, or presentation unprepared. And you are more often than not victorious, but not everybody approves of what you do. <laughs> and this could be some of these sort of like, you know, the people who aren't happy in the industry or don't like how how successful you are you may have jupiter in the 10th house you might attract that kind of jealousy where they go it's all just luck and it's not at all you prepare you're ready you know what to do you know you've won before you go into a battle you're one of those sort of zun Tzu type strategists who who you know has already worked out all the moves before you even go into a battle but it does bring some disapproval and some may say to you, oh, you're heartless, oh, you're too cold, oh, you're, you're too much about the money. There could be that kind of energy. Given the lack of cups, that might be the way that expresses itself. Let's have a look at money around you, how money manifests for you through your 10th house. Direction. Okay, yeah, a lot of you are around money in some way. And you can see the direction and the way that it should go. And it, it helps you plan as well and budget. So you're frugal when you need to be. You know how to get direction and how to put your money in the right place. So you're very, very good with the business side of things. No doubt about that at all. Okay, let's add lifestyle in. How does your lifestyle impact on your career, your vocation, your, your choices around that and how you're seen by others? Confession. Solution. This is really interesting. I shuffle these cards quite often, but these seem to come up quite often together. I think that, that there's sort of something that Spirit's sort of saying around the connection between being honest about what you're doing and, and how that helps the solution. 
So I feel that this is saying that your honesty in a way about what you're doing and your beliefs, you know, like again, Christine Lagarde and Adam Smith, you wouldn't know very much where they sat on their sort of philosophy about things. That actually helps create the solution. And I think you're also the sort of person because you go through cycles with this and you know the lean times as well. <clears throat> and you know where people have been trying to sort of fight with you illegitimately. That you know that being very clear about what you do and using what you've learned from that as part of a solution to move forward is the thing that helps you to prepare and go to victory at the next level. But some people may disapprove of what you do and you may sometimes feel like you've got to go, well, this is who I am and this is why I'm doing this. And I'm not doing it for being heartless, but you know, this is about business or whatever it is. And that's part of the solution for you to be very open about that sort of thing because I think you are quite private so sometimes you're going to have to kind of show your hand a bit more I think all right so let's get some career advice from the secret women's business oracle you don't have to be a woman for this to to fit it's just some business advice for you then we're going to have some creative advice and then we're going to have some spiritual advice before we move into kind of chakra and astrological energy to close out the reading so firstly business advice for you yes okay so if there's something that you're thinking about doing at the moment and you're sort of wondering is it time to move forward the answer would be yes and beyond that you're sort of like your your approach to can do sort of approach is always going to work very well for you and time out so that's interesting so yes there are things to do but you also need to take the time out take time out of whatever situation you're in it may be yes but it's sort of like yes but in you know a month's time it takes some time out come back refreshed if you're feeling tired if you've been dealing with some of this sort of energy so and that's also part of the cycles i think i think it's saying that whatever you do make sure you don't become a workaholic because you're very focused on your career i think so it, it is important you can move forward you can do things but don't let that get in the way of also you know having a life as well i'm feeling like this could be like saying to you know a partner oh, yeah that's right i am being a bit of a bit of a workaholic maybe the solution is to take some time out let's see creative energy around you shapeshifter oh that's interesting and contemplation <clears throat> okay so i almost feel like these are connecting together Con part of the reason for time out is that sometimes for you creatively you need to just contemplate you need that's why at the beginning there were so many minor arcana i think it was saying so much where you are within yourself your your contemplation your your connection to the spirit all of those things and time out is actually part of your preparation it's part of your cycle don't don't feel so overwhelmed and so much that you have to move and move and move and move that you t you lose that part of it. That's really important creatively for you. And if you think also of the cycle of kind of all the, 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 the pentacles or discard here, you know, if you think of it like, as I say, farming or something like that, which <clears throat> doesn't mean to say you have to be a farmer, but it's like if you think about it, the cycles take their time. You can't rush them necessarily. There may be a creative opportunity around you that, that you need to kind of shape shift and do something a bit differently and your capacity to do that. If, you, if you're questioning, is there something that's a little bit left of field that's an option for me at the moment, then the answer is yes, you can probably do it. You just, you just shift, shape shift what you're doing in your skills, but maybe it needs this time out and contemplation to work out what that means because you do like to be prepared. You don't want to just rush into something and then wing it. You're not that sort of person. Okay. So let's have a look at spiritual energy around your 10th house, pile one. Rainbow energy, the colours of the universe live within you. And you had rainbow to start with. You are very multi-talented and you are very inclusive spiritually. This is where you're not, you may come across as very business oriented and a bit cold, but you're not at all. And I think if you're a leader or a manager, you're going to have very diverse people working for you. Or you're going to have a business that helps very diverse people. A very diverse sort of client range and then also shaman the unbound energy of the ancient shaman alights the path of wellness wholeness and freedom so some of you with all the pentacles may work in health again you're going to be very good at it and you're probably then sort of a balance between the proper sort of like traditional medicine and that which is more sort of you know kind of alternative therapeutic free on some level also, it may be that your understanding of the cycles and money markets or whatever almost has that shamanic capacity, that kind of connection to spirit and understanding. The healing that comes from a proper regulated financial market, for instance. 
Okay, so let's start to bring all this together. I want to start firstly with the Crystal Chakra cards for a couple of affirmations for getting the best energy for you in your 10th house. So this will tell, tell you partly what chakra energy is spirit sort of pointing towards for contemplation at this point and also what are the affirmations. Then we'll have a look at some general astrology energy and close out with the Astro Chakra cards to bring it all together. So firstly... We have the heart chakra. So I think Spirit is saying you do have a heart. You, you just kind of hide it underneath everything else. But you know, connecting to your heart will help you, particularly when you're deciding what new things to do. And third eye, connecting to others. So I think that Spirit is saying, and we'll get to the affirmations and the crystals in a minute, but I think Spirit is saying that the, the, your one Achilles heel potentially is, that although I think you're very well-intentioned not everybody necessarily sees that so showing people where it connects to the heart and to the diversity and to what you want to heal would actually help your personal brand with the heart chakra here we have malachite which is about release and guidance the affirmations are i seek guidance from my higher self so connecting shaman rainbow energy and i release past traumas so things that didn't work don't don't hold them in your heart it might be ironically that people don't see the heart because you're just going through business but you might feel this a lot more than people see so release that energy then we have labradite in the third eye chakra transformation and synchronicity the affirmations are i understand the significance of synchronicities yeah you would because you see the patterns in things you'll see the signs pay attention to those you're very on point with those and i am always transforming spiritually so shape-shifting creatively and spiritually, I think. So you do have a very strong spiritual connection to this. It's just that I think you've compartmentalized the kind of the, the business side of things to the 10th house, which in itself is not bad. It's just understanding how that might come across to other people. So let's get some high-level astrology energy around this for you. And then, as I say, we'll close out with the Astro Chakra cards. Oh, I just realized that half of these are pointing in the wrong direction. So, okay. All right. Now I'll shuffle again. And we have full moon. So harvesting, you know, bringing the harvest in and so forth, reaping what you sow. You know that what you put in in preparation, you will get out of things. Pisces. So there's the emotion. It is there. But Pisces is sort of connected to the 12th house. So you hide it a bit. Fifth house. There could be a connection with someone else or with a love partner or a creative partner that is very good for your 12th, uh, 10th house. And fire. Yeah, there is a creative. There's something very creative about this. The interesting thing is the first card is the full moon, the harvest. So that's sort of the material, you know, like what you bring in in the harvest. It's very, very key to this. But there is an emotional side to it and a very strong creative side to it that I think you keep a little bit hidden. But it is part of your personal brand it's like the underpinning it's part of your preparation and i think that's a good thing so let's just finish off with some astro chakra cards for you pile one the solar plexus chakra the sacral creative chakra and the spirituality yeah you're you're very different to what you appear i think in the 10th house i think you appear just as being you know, the consummate business person money person all of that kind of thing and you are that that's not that's not actually untrue but underneath it there's a lot of sort of emotional sort of energy and spiritual energy so around who you are and your power in the world we have the moon emotions nurturing this picks up that empress energy there is something nurturing about what you do it will probably help if people think it's all about business maybe it's the the type of business you get into but there is something nurturing you do want to sort of help other people creativity so the sacral chakra has jupiter which is about wisdom and honesty like and that's this confession and solution you're very much you know you don't hide a lot you know you you might hide your heart a little bit but you don't hide your your motives and what you're doing and what you're trying to create and i think people respond to that and spirituality so you have the the crown chakra with mars a lot of your drive and your energy comes from a spiritual knowing knowing what your what accomplishment really means to you and i think it's why you're able to deal with the cycles of things you're very dialed into that and you understand that there's a there are cycles and growth happens in cycles so your accomplishment has a spiritual underpinning so you're kind of the as i say apparently consummate business person 
very, very good with money, very good with the material, very good with the cycles of life. But underneath there is a creative and spiritual person and that's part of your preparation. I just think you keep it a little bit more to yourself. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pawan. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. And if you did enjoy it, if this is the first of the you through the houses that you've seen and certainly if you're seeing this when it's published there's already also all the houses one through to nine and over the next couple of months there'll also be the 11th and 12th published if you're seeing this later if you're seeing it later than 2022 then they're all available in a playlist and you can look at them at your leisure because they're all timeless so i hope to see you in future or other you through the house series readings and more generally in other pick a card readings welcome pile two to your reading so we have some career and money cards some success oracle sort of indications of sort of icons or energies that could be similar to your 10th house some god and goddess and also some color energy and i've got to say you are an interesting group <clears throat> i think you've got a lot of internal conflict about the, all the issues of the 10th house. One side of you, I think, is naturally very able to create success, to be able to get the good life, to be able to remove obstacles, to be very successful in whatever you do. And there is a side of you around being able to self-promote, track the success, remove the obstacles, and be a bit like JP Morgan, you know, the sort of like archetypal business person, the person able to really build an empire and so forth. That's definitely within you. But you have a lot of ambivalence about it as well, too. You're a very powerful person. Like, your, your internal power is significant with Oya here as the goddess energy around you. Kind of ferocious in a way. And there's a side of you with Emma Goldman, who is an anarchist and who didn't believe in capitalism at all. Like, you couldn't get any more opposite, those two. And yet they're both in your 10th house energy. Emma wants power that is free, that is distributed, that is anarchic, that is that is not sort of regulated and not, you know, the, the one percent. She wants she wanted that all spread and to have immediate, really major change in how things are done. And possibly with the grey energy here in learning to scan body might have almost the energy here might almost have been self-sabotaging against the success energy, but then equally on the other side, to be too successful if there's an ambivalence about what that means, about who you are, about your philosophy, that could also have kind of like physical issues for you. And you're always trying to find comfort, like getting the comfort level in what you do in your career and your personal brand against the unexpected. And some of the unexpected is is the anarchic energy that you have within yourself. And some of it is when you become successful almost when you don't expect to. And it's interesting, I think one of the keys here, the people you spend the most time with shape who you are. If you are someone who spends a lot of time with people who are trying to overthrow or change the status quo, then you're going to be more like this powerful anarchic sort of energy. And you may find it hard to find comfort. And your promotion will be externally externally focused towards a cause. If you, however, spend more time with business people and people who are about success and manifestation, then you may find occasionally your own ambivalence about it is affects your comfort and you don't feel comfortable promoting yourself. So many of you may have been born, say, into privilege or something like that, and you may have some inherent issues with it. Or on the other hand, it could be the exact opposite. And your fire in your belly might have been born from coming into the world without those sort of networks and so forth. And yet your innate capacity to succeed, you might, I think for many of you, you will, you will get a a point in your life, maybe more than once, but certainly at least once, where there is almost a, a philosophical decision that has to be made. It's almost like a, a, a Faustian offer is made, and it's which direction do you go with? Who are the people that you want to associate with? What do you want your legacy to be? Do you ultimately want it to be successful and you bring in some of the anarchy by making sure it's shared with others in some way and is fair, not so sort of, sort of cutthroat capitalist? And you help others to attract success and remove obstacles so you use your energy that way or do you want it to be very much the anarchic changing everything but but still allowing people to have some stability and comfort not to throw everything up in the air and have everybody feeling sort of at risk of loss so i think there's a point in your life if you haven't already come to it where those two warring sides of you are playing out it's like you could have 
say for argument's sake, Capricorn in the, the 10th house, so you have the natural ability to make the money and all that kind of thing. But you also have something like Uranus in the 10th house as well too. So you want revolution and change. I think there's a kind of, and that's just an example, but I think there's a warring energy within you. It's very interesting. So let's get a little bit more detail. Let's ask with Tarot. We're going to ask the key career vocational energy around. How does this this sort of, as I say, push-pull energy that you have within operate? Then we're going to look at the impact of that on your personal brand. And then we'll have a look at you know, what are some of the key external influences on all of this. Because for you, that is going to be part of it. It's sort of like where you were born, the people that you're around will probably have a lot to do with which side of this particular continuum you, you tilt more towards. So let's sort of see some career energy, first of all, for you. Okay, so firstly, and it may be because, you know, because you're kind of acutely aware that the people you're around have a lot to do with, with which direction you go, and there's a part of you that wants to make sure you're self-directed. Around your career, I think you're more of an iconoclast and more of a loner than a collaborator. And why I say that is we've got both the Three of Cups and Three of Wands reversed. So they're the two classic sort of celebration, common vision sort of things. You're always a little bit out of step, even if you're very successful, which I think you could very easily be. It's not, it's not a group endeavour for you. So the, the fierce independence and power of the anarchist connected with the the sort of business acumen sort of makes you very much the sort of entrepreneur or the lone wolf or the iconoclast, as I say. So that's part of that energy. There are very strong external factors on this because two of the five cards are major arcana. So you, you very much respond to the external world. But for you, the external world is part of the struggle because you've got the sun, which is your life path, what you want to do. And then we have reverse strength. So it's almost like the more that the external world tries to push you in one direction or another, or the people that are around you try to get you to side with them, the more you feel your strength is is diminished. That's why you're so fiercely independent. You don't want all that drama. You've got enough drama internally, to be honest, because you're trying to sort out who you are and, and how you want that to be in the world. And so you don't want other people's stuff to be getting in the way of all of that. And the more that the more that they impinge on your life path, the more that there's an issue. You are meant to be successful, I think. But it's what does success mean to you, I think, is the question. So let's see your personal brand, if that gives us any more clues about how you get this balance. Okay. Your personal brand has the same, there's a very interesting energy here. It has the same push-pull because on one hand, you've got very much, I think, this anarchic energy, the Knight of Wands and the Chariot Reverse, just sort of like going for it. Like you, you don't look like you are too concerned about planning things out. It's like you just want to rush into things and be right in the middle of the contradiction and live in the contradiction and maybe create in the contradiction. It might come out very creatively for some of you. The way that you balance this might be that you have a very anarchic, creative, different, unique way of doing things, but you make actual monetary success so you get that message out. That might be one way that it occurs because there's sort of like this, this creative sort of ambitious drive with dealing with chaos in a way with the chariot reversed very pragmatic you you are seen by people that you really understand what you're dealing with so if you were being anarchic you would understand the system you were trying to overthrow if you're being a business person you understand how to be successful so people see you as very pragmatic partly why i think they want to connect with you but i think that you you see other people's views as 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 becoming a destabilization of, of what you want to do with this balance within yourself. But there is a significant relationship around this. There definitely is. Like you, you, when I was looking at these two with the five of pentacles reversed and the two of cups, as I put it out, I thought power couple. Like you could literally be the anarchist who's with the big business person or the big business person who's with the anarchist. It's almost as though through a relationship through two, not lots of people, just two, there is a way to be connected and seen that way. 
So, you know, I almost get the sort of sense like, you know, you could have a partner, for instance, who was a big business person or a, or a kind of politician or something like that, very much in the powers of the world. And you could be seen as a sort of like artistic, flamboyant and, and the, kind of the, the, the good angel on their, on their shoulder in a way, their conscience. So there's something like that in your personal brand, I think, for many of you. And if it's not that, you will find that harmony. It is saying you will find the harmony, but not why you only stick to yourself. So it is saying for your personal brand that you do need to balance this out a bit. You're, you're so concerned, I think, that people around you could influence you one way or the other and blur the lines and make you lose control of your brand that you maybe keep people at, at bay to some degree. But you, you will likely bring yourself more into balance by finding the right people around you which again goes back to the people you spend the most time with, so finding the right ones. So let's have a look at the external world then. Let's pull three cup cards for what external world factors are impacting you with your 10th house. Four of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. Okay. I do think that some of you may have come from money, in some way or you're around money the people and the teams that you're around you're dealing with money or financial things in some way because this can say family this can also say family and it says money queen of pentacles reverse suggests somebody around you who is similarly i think anarchic to you it's it almost get the sense this, this sort of makes me feel of like two sisters who grow up in a, a wealthy family who decide we want to save the world from all of this and one is you is all the power and the energy you don't have to be a woman but i'm just sort of because we've got two female characters here is all about anarchy and really getting it through and the other is more about like a step-by-step -step thing around the powers of the world and understanding the powers of the world so it could even be something like that a sibling or a friend somebody that you grew up with or something like that but there's there is at least one person around you who is similarly jaded about just the money but but there's a lot of people around you that there is money there is success all of that kind of thing is part of of the daily discussion and it's and it's you know in your friendship circle or it's in your family in some way okay so let's have a look at some direct sort of 3d impacts so this we're going to start with some energy around career then finance and then lifestyle and then we'll go on to get some career advice some creative advice and some spiritual advice as well so firstly how is this playing out energetically around your career at the moment pile two Promotion and promoter. That's interesting. Attentiveness. Approval. Okay, so maybe one of the internal issues for you is if you get the approval of one or other side of this, do you create your own disapproval internally? Like what, what does approval mean to you? What would success look like to you? What are the criteria for that? Pay attention to the people who give you approval. Are they aligned with you and so forth? Because you're likely to have a lot of career success, to be, promot to be promoted in careers, to be able to promote yourself. And some of your own success comes from how you promote yourself and your personal brand. But paying attention to what does and doesn't get approval is important for your career in some way. Okay, let's have a look at finance. Privacy. Acceptance. Okay, so I think maybe one of the things around this is that is that if you become very successful, you feel like you're going to lose some of your privacy. There might be some sort of need for acceptance. And also, if you're going to be an anarchist and the person who's pushing against the powers of the world, you have to accept the privacy and you know, your financial matters and so forth. So again, if you were someone who came from a wealthy family, but you sort of went down the sort of anarchic sort of financial sort of freedom thing, you need to know that people are maybe before they're going to accept what you are saying or feeling about that they want to know that you're walking the talk i do think that you will i don't think that's the issue i think it's for you it's like working out that kind of comfort zone literally between the sort of like the, the powerful energy for change that you have but also this sort of capacity to work within the powers of the world so let's see if lifestyle energy gives us any clues Borrowed beliefs, okay. Foundation, all right. So I think this is saying for many of you, what is the foundation of this? So 
these could be read one of two ways. It could be that from a family background, whether it is wealthy or the exact opposite, you have borrowed and taken on a lot of beliefs, but within you actually have a pull towards the other direction. And this is why there's the, the discomfort around it. What is the foundation? What would you want if you were had to look on these two ends of a continuum, because they are the two extreme ends of a continuum, where would you want your foundation to be? And make it your decision, not the decision of other people, the decision of your family, friends or whatever. Because there's something in this where I think what's creating the, the disconnect is because you have taken in certain other people's beliefs and so forth, political beliefs or whatever. You need to step back from that and work out what is really true to you. So to help with that, let's have a look at some career, creative and spiritual advice for you. So firstly, around career. Service, service, service. Okay. So to me, that tilts a little bit more to the anarchic, but not completely because you do need structure for service. I think for you, part of the foundation will have to be how you serve and help others. You know, like focus your thoughts on that because it's somewhere in that because you, if you went too much to the anarchic, you may not be helping yourself or anybody else. It might feel like the fire in the belly, but it may not work. Equally, if you go too much to the business end, it might become a little bit cold and calculating and not connected to others. So think about service to others, others in terms of how you would want to serve them and serve society, not in terms of what their beliefs are. Work it out for yourself. Okay. And another card. Discipline. And then bring the discipline to it. And that makes sense. Consistency is going to be important, particularly if people are looking whether you walk the talk. So, so once you've worked out where you are in that continuum, be disciplined about it. Be consistent with it. Make sure that the decisions you make, the people that you mix with, all of that sort of stuff fits with that balance, not with anybody else's sort of wishes or whether you know you, you want approval or whatever. Make, make it your own approval. Let's see how this plays out creatively for you. Protection, contemplation. Okay, so you can protect your creative energy by thinking about this stuff, getting that balance right. Because while you don't and you're living on other people's beliefs and so forth, if your foundation isn't clear in your lifestyle, then it's hard for you to protect what is true and creative to you. Okay, let's see what spiritual energy could help you. I mean, you've got, you're a powerhouse. You're an absolute powerhouse. It's just that you're sort of like at odds with yourself at the moment. So let's see what spiritual energy might help with all of that. Creative soul. You are highly intuitive and an artistic being. Give form to your imagination. Explore your creative expression. I'm going to put that with contemplation. There is something. See, I think you're kind of caught in a sort of political versus money sort of paradigm, but there is actually something creative in what you do. That's why you have to protect what is creative because that's where you're going to get your foundation. And it'll come through sort of spiritual channeling, I think. And then we also have visionary. You have the capacity to envision what's possible. So there's somewhere in this continuum that is different. That's why it's important not to have borrowed beliefs of other people or to, to be too conservative or to be too anarchic. The vision is somewhere in them. Your own internal struggle about this and what it means for your vocation, your personal brand, is what's going to create this vision. And there's something creative that comes out of it. So there's a very strong spiritual underpinning to this. And that might be part of the foundation to think about. That's why other people's beliefs shouldn't work for you, because it needs to be your spiritual resonance. So to hopefully help with that, we're going to finish off with some crystal chakra affirmations and some astrology and astro chakra, so chakra energy, so that we can kind of see what spirit would suggest you focus on to get this balance and to get that degree of comfort around this that you're seeking right from the beginning. So we have the third eye chakra, so that's your sort of spiritual connection and connection to others, like how you connect to others and find the right person. And we have... The heart chakra, making sure it's something that really matters to you. And your heart is probably the way to find the, the midpoint there, not so much your mind. So let's have a look at what the potential or what the chakra energies are and the affirmation. So with the third eye chakra, we have as you're right. As you're right. So this is about downloads and clairsentience. Yeah, there's something that comes through to you. I think a lot of it around clairsentience, clairvoyance, I think as well too. Something about color energy as well. I activate my clear sentient ability by choosing to intuitively feel. So yes, don't just sit in the intellectual philosophical, go into that energy 
and I am receiving cosmic downloads daily. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you definitely are. But I think that you try and think about them. Whereas if you go into your heart and we have chrysoprase here and meditate and detoxify, we have I detoxify myself of harmful behaviors, connections and environments. So yeah, where, where people are pulling you in the wrong direction, detach from that. And I meditate to become closer to spirit. So yeah, you've got to go within. Your creative energy is going to give you the answer. Looking for approval of others or to fit in with a particular philosophy or to live out either the anarchy or the great success, that's not going to get you the comfort and the balance. There's something within. There's something visionary within. So let's have a look at some astrological energy for you. The ninth house. So your learning, higher learning, maybe travel, your philosophy, very important to all of this. You will always be philosophical, but I think you've also got to get to your heart and your learning. You know, again, in your learning, did it help you to find the balance or do you feel like you're carrying borrowed beliefs from academia or something like that? Okay. Then we have Mars. Yeah, you're this very strong energy. I do think a lot of maybe the more anarchic combative energy has come through higher learning in some way which can be fine but you just have to work out if it's if it's your beliefs or whether you've just taken on the beliefs of a, a teacher or a lecturer for instance then we have opposition we'll have a look at the planets but there's obviously a tension well that's the tension within that you have anyway and we have mutable which is about being a bit more flexible somewhere in there there's a flexibility let's have a look at what planets are in opposition to see if that can tell us a little bit more about how this energy plays out Venus, Venus and Jupiter, okay, how you love and what you want to do and how you want to serve others, there's some sort of like disconnect, like I do think for many of you, you've, you've come almost into a family potentially that is the opposite of what you would naturally head towards or you're kind of in opposition to that. And you do want to help others and expand others and so forth. And that's part of your love nature. But there's also maybe a conflict between, as I say, people that you care about and what your philosophical view is. So you need to bring those into balance. You need to bring the right people into your life. Or reconcile that, you know, sometimes you can just be different to like family members and friends. Okay, let's finish off with some Astro Chakra energy to bring it together for you. The heart chakra again so it's very much saying that's important to this the throat chakra how you communicate and the heart chakra so heart chakra very strong that's like having uranus and mercury conjunct so very unusual the people that you truly love and are close to are, are very very unusual and sort of like sort of uh iconoclastic like you there, there's something about that and very much meeting of the mind so a meeting of the minds will bring the emotional connection and, and i think bring the right people in to your energy and then you can head with the throat chakra with the sun towards what your life path is and what your truth is as opposed to the truths that either family or academia or friends have been putting into you because it's pulling you in two directions you can see what it says is you can see both arguments which is a brilliant thing and, and it picks up the mutable energy, but it's like you've got to work out where you sit on that continuum. Once you do that, I think that you'll be able to be very successful at whatever it is that you're trying to do with the 10th house. But there is, there's an internal opposition and you need to kind of work that out so that you can express your life path. So I hope that that resonates for you. Pile two. I hope that it, it makes sense because it is a bit of a tricky energy, but it's a very, very inspiring energy as well. And I hope that, that you do find that balance and, and bring that in to your 10th house. Hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like and subscribe and comment in the, in the comment section if you care to share about it. I hope that I see you in future and potentially past if this is the first one that you've come to you through the houses episodes. And I also hope that I see you in future more general pick a card readings. Welcome pile three to your reading. So these are some career and money cards to give a bit of a sense about the sort of career, financial sort of aspects of the 10th house for you. We've also got some examples from the success oracles for some of the sort of energy around brand and what you could be known for, God and goddess energy, and also some color sort of creative energy. So 
it's interesting, like at least one other reading was a bit like this. You feel like you're kind of a bit of two worlds in one in your 10th house. And it could mean that you tilt towards one rather than the other, or it could be that you combine them. But on one hand, we have the person who is happy to take risks and be an explorer and go out into the unknown and the new and to be confident and so forth. And there's a sort of sense of energy and expansion and fire and creativity around that and exploration, literally. There's also the side that is very meditative, very at one with the cycles of nature and so forth, very patient and who has a sort of like a, a broader outlook, so a spiritual side of things. And then when we look at the, the success oracles, we have Cheryl Sandberg on one hand, who was the, I think she went in as the chief operating officer of Facebook, but she certainly, she wrote a book called Lean In or a philosophy around lean in and getting involved in looking at, you know, what you can do with organizations and how you can participate and, and social media and communication. So it picks up very much this explorative risk taker with a lot of expansion, expanding things out with Nui, so the night, and developing mental clarity. So finding the way in a very expansive environment, because of course Facebook or any of the social medias are incredibly expansive, finding your way through that, the night sky almost, to get the clarity. There's a side of you that's about that and prepared to take the risks to do it. And that almost feels like it's in a hurry in a way. Over here, we have Deepak Chopra, who is all about the cycles of nature, meditation, spiritual connection, the patience, the, the bigger picture outlook. And we have Helios, which is the sun. I find it really interesting that we have the sun energy when we're talking about the god energy. And we've got the night energy when we're talking about the, the goddess energy. And this color energy is about living an extraordinary life, the sort of life of a sun king, the life of, of somebody who, who is connected to the cycles of nature and has this bigger picture outlook. So one feels almost explore, exploring the expansiveness of the, the, what is in the mind and internal in a way, internal to an organization, what needs to be clarified, how risks need to be balanced, and, and how you then expand your 10th house energies on a on a sensible way, in a way that's sustainable and finds the way through a bit of chaos. And the other feels like it's almost detached from that and has a higher level outlook. So I feel like most of the people who've come to this reading, you either have chosen a very sort of spiritual or cyclical type of career. So there's anything from doing spirituality for a career through to something like being a farmer or an environmentalist or somebody who is looking at the bigger picture, but it's around cycles of life and so forth and, and how to make that extraordinary and so in that kind of way. Or you've potentially chosen you know, something like social media, something like the sort of new, the scientific, the expansion into what we don't know and very much the intellectual. So this is the intellect, I feel, and this is the spirit. And so you could well be melding the two. You could be looking at some sort of business or intellectual sort of issue that you bring a spiritual and cyclic sort of understanding to, or you could be looking at sort of careers or energy that is around business or cycles and the environment, farming, any of that kind of thing. But you're looking at it from the perspective of almost an internal risk manager and explorer. How do we how do we have the clarity to to fix up what needs to be fixed up to contribute in the way that it needs to be contributed? Or you could have chosen one or the other. So it may depend on where you sit on a continuum with this. I'm sort of getting that energy quite often with these readings. Actually, it's interesting. So let's see what Tarot says. See if that gives us a little bit more of an idea about where you might sit in this. And so I'm going to start firstly with asking about the energy around your career and your vocation, because that's in many ways one of the key elements of the 10th house. Then we'll have a look at the impact of that on your personal brand, how you're seen by others, and then we'll have a look at how the external world is impacting your 10th house. So firstly, the 10th house energies around your career at the moment. Okay, so firstly, a lot of this is internal, 
there may be a couple of sort of external sort of characters that are important to this. So I feel like this King of Cups is more your energy than somebody else. But the fact that we've got a major arcana thing there is that there's something external that is either slowing things down a bit for you or making you have to look at things from a different perspective and have to think about them. There is a definite tilt in this at the moment towards the Deepak Chopra end of the scale because this is this is not so much about ambition and sort of like, you know, sort of like, bringing people together in some sort of like ambitious sort of creative energy like a Sheryl Sandberg going into Facebook. It's in fact, you don't really like the competition. You don't really like a sort of 10th house that's about, you know, who's who's going to be the most powerful. That's not where you come from at all. You don't care about winning the argument. You care about being in your heart. So I feel like you're very strongly connected to living an extraordinary life by being very spiritual and letting go of that which doesn't work. But there's something going on around your career at the moment that's making it, forcing you to look at this side. It's almost like you see this as your shadow side. And I don't think it actually is a shadow, but I feel like it's you're much more comfortable in the spiritual. But you're being forced at the moment around your career to think about what is the ex exploration? What risk can I manage? You know, what what are kind of what do I have to think about? Like, I actually am going to have to think about this. I can't just rely on the sort of cycles and, and spiritual. So there's something going on around that for you at the moment. So let's have a look at what the impact is on your personal brand. Okay, so the irony of this is, and it's not saying this isn't a shadow, but it's a side of you that you don't necessarily rate, and yet it is really part of you. The irony is that part of your strength of your personal brand is your clarity of thought. So if you are in the spiritual, you are not sort of someone who's really woo and you know just sort of says it's all high vibrations and without kind of the heft behind it. You really, there is an intellectual structure, you know, scientific structure, a psychological structure to what you do. That's definitely there. So ironically, although you're not necessarily wanting to get into that and to get into intellectual debates, you are seen as and more than capable of winning that sort of debate if you had to. It's just that you really don't want to be in that space. So I wonder whether some of you have come from a very sort of like tricky, risky environment and you're now finding sort of a different spiritual way of doing things. But part of your brand is your capacity to find, help people find their way through thought patterns that aren't working, scientific things that aren't working, an argument that isn't working, help them to, to get out of being stuck and not being able to make decisions. So it's almost like you could be someone who had spent a period of your life, say, in a corporate job, very high-level corporate job, for instance, and you've left and you now look at it from a spiritual perspective and you could come back, part of your brain could be coming back into that world to free up people from the very thing you freed yourself up from because you are actually recognised in this space. So you kind of bring something alternative, an alternative way of thinking. But it's just, there's a part of you that kind of you, you kind of go, oh, I could do that, but I don't know that I want to go back into that world. But it really is part of how you're seen. You're seen as being very clever. Uh, I think you'd like to be seen as being kind of very spiritual, and I'm sure there is a spiritual aspect. But there's something about your past, something about your brand, which people really gravitate to. They like the way you talk. They like the way you think. And I think spirit is saying, don't, don't underestimate that. You can still have all of this. But this is actually going to mean that the, the, the kind of canvas that you can work on is a lot bigger than you're maybe thinking. So let's see with three cards what external influences are on all of this at the moment. Because I do think there's something external pushing you. There's something, you know, people who want you to come and do something, want you to want to, to engage with your mind more than just your sort of spiritual outlooks and so forth. Yeah, you would be ideal to go into organisations and help them through change. And, to, and this is exactly what Cheryl Sandberg did in a way, that she went in and she fixed up certain things in Facebook and so forth. So you're actually very good at that. And your spiritual outlook actually helps with that. It helps people get stuck from just being focused on the material or feeling emotionally sort of drained and, and uninspired and so forth and coming out of kind of like debates that are intellectual that aren't going anywhere, that just keep, you know, it's sort of like you know you could go into an environment where all the teams were fighting with each other 
and it's it's actually just stopping any progress at all. So so you are good at getting people unstuck. And so that balance of a higher level spiritual outlook with the capacity to explore, take risks and expand when necessary, that's part of who you are. And I do think you're going to be more and more called upon to help with that in some way. But you've got to feel comfortable with it. You've got to understand that you're not becoming just the, the intellectual and somehow reducing your spiritual enlightenment. It's, 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 it's just toggling between the two. So let's have a look at some 3D energy around this, so around career, around money, and around lifestyle to see what other information or hints spirit could give you around this. So attentiveness. Yeah, paying attention. What are they really asking for? It's not as different to you as you think it is, I think. Whatever this opportunity is or wherever your career is being kind of navigated at the moment, you're not going to lose that which you've been valuing choice yeah you have the choice you have the choice about how you do this and and how you you're different you're unique you don't have to be exactly one thing or the other and authentic yeah because you're authentic so that's all that you're really called upon to do if you if you stay authentic in all of this then then that spiritual side of you will be part of it but you'll also not be sort of like somehow artificially keeping down the intellectual prowess either so I definitely think you've been in environments where that was valued but not much of the heart and the soul and you, you're a bit worried that you become something you despise, but you won't. So let's have a look at monetary energies around your 10th house. Alternatives. So yeah, I think you're going to have some alternatives about how to make money, some other options coming through, which triggers this question and debts. And you may... You may have found, because you've been so focused on the spiritual and so forth, that the, the, the manifestation hasn't necessarily come through. And this may actually help you deal with that. Some alternatives where you can take your sort of spiritual capacity, but actually also deal with debts. Let's have a look at lifestyle and see how that impacts your 10th house. Confession. It's interesting. This one comes up quite often, I find. And solution, this is freaky, I have to say. Like, both in, in readings that I've been doing lately that are picker cards and also with individual ones, these cards come up together quite often and and they have, in fact, in at least one other reading here. And yet I shuffle, I riffle shuffle, I do all of that sort of stuff. It, you know, like, statistically, it shouldn't happen. But I think it's just pointing to something. I think it's pointing to the fact that dealing with some of the sort of internal battles we have about who we want to be in the world compared to sort of the other aspects of our lives part of it is about being authentic and being honest with ourselves about that and there we find the solution if you really go to why is it that the spiritual matters so much compared to the the mind with you you'll find something in there there's an answer for that and when you confess that to yourself you find the solution to bring it together so let's get some business advice for you, some creative advice and some spiritual advice and see how that helps. Empowerment. What can you do about it? So, yeah, what can you do about it? What do you choose? You're all actually about empowerment, spiritual empowerment, but you also can empower others and I think it's through your intellect. What do you do? What do you bring that's authentic to you to this? And home-based business so you may be thinking about or do something that's home-based and or you might have a home sort of focus to that and bringing that sort of like the, bringing the spiritual and the intellectual into something in the home in some way okay let's see what creative energy is around your 10th house mind see you, you can't shut off your mind and curiosity you have to remain curious i just think this is giving me the sense there are some people who get into spirituality and they go oh i've got to shut off my mind you know my mind is all the sort of like you know kind of matrix thinking and it, and it limits things and i'm less spiritual if i get into my mind but you have a very strong mind and it's part of you you need to reconnect to your mind and your curiosity that will find the solution for you it's 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 almost a kind of inverse snobbery that can happen around spirituality so just think about that if that's happened with you if you've sort of gone i'm all about the sort of the spiritual journey i'm not going to be sort of thinking about the logic it's all about the faith it's all about the high vibrations there's there is something in your mind as well which will help and you know is is an intrinsic part of you and is just as valuable and is not anti-spiritual 
Okay, and speaking of spiritual, let's see what spiritual energy is around you. Detach. Retreat from situations that are not in harmony with your soul. Open to a greater love of self. Like, I think... I think this works both ways for you because I think that, that that's that's the energy of your spiritual quest. You've detached and sometimes that's the right thing to do but sometimes it won't be. I think you need to think through. If that shuts off your mind and your curiosity, you've detached too much. Okay, and then we get financial flow. You've earned it, you deserve it. Financial rewards begin to flow. Profitable solutions come through. So you're meant to be able to manifest this and some of that is using your mind and understanding the system and what to explore. That's why I think that many of you have come here maybe detached a bit too much from the material to be spiritual, you know, like to follow the spiritual path. Okay, so let's see if we can bring it into balance to sort of close out. So we're going to use crystal chakra energy for some affirmations for you, some astrology around this, and then we'll use the astro chakra cards to finish off. So firstly, crystal chakra energy for you. Third eye chakra, that's connecting to others, but it is spiritual. It's still staying in the spiritual realm. And solar plexus, your internal and external power. So third eye chakra here, we have blue aragonite, which is about calmness and relaxation. I take time for self-care and relaxation, and I remain calm in times of stress. So if you find it stressful to go into certain environments which you think are very intellectual, thought heavy as opposed to spiritual, having your own spiritual practice helps you balance that. Brings you into your power with the solar plexus chakra and yellow fluorite. This talks about harmony and optimism. I choose to have an optimistic outlook and I am in harmony with nature. So, and you are with the cycles of nature, but it's also your own nature. Like don't, don't suppress something that is actually key to you. Okay, let's see the astrological energy around you. So we have Taurus. Pluto, Mercury, and Trine. So we'll have a look at the planets around Trine. But this is interesting. Taurus can be stubborn. I do think with great loving care here, Pile 3, that you're a bit stubborn. And and it's and you need to kind of like get more into what would be a good life for you, not just the sort of like spiritual beyond that. Because you are capable of great transformation, but it works better if your mind and your communication are connected. So don't get stubborn about it, you know? Like don't feel like it's all, you know, I have to be all high vibes every day or whatever. Like there's more to it than that, and you have more more that you can offer to that. And it will be easier than you think with a try. And let's have a look at the planets involved. moon so yes your emotions your psychic ability all of that sort of thing moon and saturn okay yeah you are kind of your own worst enemy in this you are you are really hard on yourself something the powers of the world all that kind of stuff with saturn something has made you feel that you need to detach and just be living in spirit and just in your psychic ability. But you need to also be connected to the structures of the world as well. You need those two things to be in trine. Like it's it's something's hurt you or something's made you sort of like almost have a distaste for the, the material world. But but there is there is a lot to be said for bringing that sort of stuff into balance. I think at the moment your moon triumphs over Saturn. It's all about the feels. It's all about that sort of like, you know, the emotions. But Saturn will have its way eventually if it feels suppressed. So I think going with the flow and understanding, you know, that there is wisdom. You have wisdom and so forth. And you you are able to sort of shift other things and so forth and see the structure of things. And that requires the curiosity of your mind. Okay, let's finish off with some Astro Chakra cards for you. The throat Chakra. The heart chakra and the heart chakra. So you'll always come from the heart. Like delving into your mind is not going to make you some cold-blooded business person. It's just not. But it's going to bring you, you know, you can get the discipline. You can bring the satin in through the emotion. It's saying that through your heart, like understanding what you can bring to the table and the focus that you can bring to others. You, know, you, you are the explorer. You are able to sort of like see the expansion opportunities. Your mind is able to focus this. That is actually a gift to others. It's, it's a heart-based gift. 
And it's connected to who you are, to your life path with the sun, because that's like having sun and Saturn conjunct. But it does make you feel that you have to be really under strict regulation when you have, if you have sun and Saturn conjunct, you feel like you have to always be right and do the right thing all the time. So I just think that bringing that really strong sort of sense of responsibility, but bringing it into the more material realm, it, like, it, it is actually an act of love. It actually is a spiritual act, but it's sort of like you're not necessarily seeing it that way because you're holding yourself under such strict regulation. But there's a lot of psychic energy coming through in the, in the throat chakra with Neptune. If you explore your dreams, what was it that you really wanted to do? Why did you sort of really start thinking about the spiritual and how do you connect that? You know, what are the dreams? How do, you, how do you take something from the kind of Neptunian sort of night expansiveness exploration into something that's actually within the cycles and the patterns of life and so forth so that you can make something real because you are meant to do that and as I say it is ultimately an act of love so if you have limited some of how you use your intellect for the sake of your spirit then you are you are not just cheating yourselves pile three you're cheating other people because there is a very interesting brilliance to you that is also coming very much from the heart so I think the spirit just wants you to think about that and bring it a little bit more into balance. I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Beyond that, I hope I see you in other You Through the Houses episodes, either ones that have already been published or ones that are yet to be published. And if you're seeing this in 2023 or onwards, and it's the first one you've seen, the whole set were done over the 12 months of 2022. So they're all on a playlist if you want to check out any other ones. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future more general pick a card readings. Welcome pile four to your reading. So we have some career and money cards. We have some success oracle icons to give us a sense of some of the energy of your 10th house. We have gods and goddesses and also color energy around creativity. So this is definitely a very artistic creative type you know, maybe performative entertainer we've got designer entertainer we've got Beyonce here there's definitely a sense around the people who come here that if you aren't in a creative sort of job you aren't an entertainer a designer an artist a singer or something like that there is still something very creative around what you do something very entertaining and beguiling and magical around what you do so you are you're likely to have like a fire sign, I would say, in the 10th house or it's sort of planets like Venus or sort of Mercury for sort of inspiration, that kind of energy around your 10th house. You are, you are very much to be seen and you're very, very good at what you do and you're very much an individual. In fact, you will fight like hell if necessary to be an individual and that has some impact sometimes on your, the flow of money around you, I think, which I'll get to. But why I say that, so we've got Ayn Rand here, who is the ultimate self-made individualist. So, you know, she wrote Atlas Shrugged, and that's very much the sort of the person on their own journey, fiercely independent uh, and, and very much about the self. And that doesn't mean that you're selfish. It just means that the, the sort of like the, the, the sense of self, sense of who you are, your authenticity, being who you are and being prepared with Aries to fight for that if it's necessary. It's part of your 10th house. People would not take you on very lightly. You've got a powerful presence. You may well have Aries in the 10th actually with Aries there. But even if you don't, or you might have Mars in the 10th house, there's something about you that is compelling. Compelling from a sense of, I will be myself, and that's it. Thank you very much. And really entertaining, really sort of beautiful, charismatic, all of those sort of things with a real sense with Morgan Le Fay of magic, of a bit of glamour. There's a lot of glamour around this energy. Neptune could be in the 10th as well. And on one hand, around this sort of ferocity of independence, we have the Auburn energy about grounding yourself and making sure that you only take on the battles that are worth taking on because people will see you as formidable anyway. For the most part, you might think you have to battle more than you actually have to. And that might be then going into the sort of sort of individual fierceness of, of design and beauty of a Beyonce with coral energy here allowing flow and synchronicity. So life doesn't always have to be a battle. But the interesting thing for you is I think this sort of energy between being incredibly compelling and attractive to others and being incredibly who you are and sometimes almost sort of like my way or the highway, 
I feel makes your, your 10th house fortunes a bit variable over your life. Sometimes that which is different and entertaining makes you lots of money. At other times, it may in fact have a halt. So you could be the sort of person who moves workplaces a lot because ultimately if you can't really be yourself, then you'd rather just go and leave and get on with it and find something else. So there could be sort of times where money is a bit shorter because you are fiercely independent and fiercely true to who you are. At other times, you're bringing in a lot of money because what is magical and different and entertaining and well-designed and well-presented about you brings it in. So you kind of know you can back yourself, but you and because of that, you can be really stubborn about this. And I don't think that Spirit's saying that's a problem, but I think it is saying that you might have you know changed jobs a lot or be in, in some sort of industry where there's a lot of change. And certainly if you're an entertainer or something, that's the case. But sometimes it's going to work for you and other times it's going to not work for you. If you're comfortable with that, that's fine. If not, you may have to look at how much you'll compromise this sort of fierce independence with what the industry or your client or, or your boss or whatever it might be wants from you. So let's have a look at how with tarot it's playing out in your career at the moment. Then we'll have a look at your personal brand and then we'll see what impact the external world is having on things. So, your career at this point in time. Okay. I feel that many of the people who've come to this reading... Your, the the Irand end is really starting to sort of arc up. The Knight of Swords is coming here. I feel like there's a passion project or something very beautiful or wonderful that you want to go towards. Or it could even be a love connection that is going to connect to your 10th house that you want the freedom to move towards. And I feel like at the moment you feel a bit stuck somewhere. So you, you really want to just kind of crash through or crash, you know, take on that real individualist, you know, the war. But you sort of know that some things have to be completed where you are, that it's not as simple as that. So there's sort of incremental change. It's like you're, you're coping with an environment, a job, a gig, whatever it might be, that's not ideally what you want to do. But you're taking it step by step. You're kind of putting some reins on the Ayn Rand side of it so that you can complete something because there's something not complete. So... If you were an entertainer, you might be on some sort of tour and you might be getting a little bit tired of it and want to get back to your loved one or wanting to do the next creative project. But you sort of know that you can't just sort of like walk. You're going to have to incrementally, step by step, close that out, change it, clear it so that you can do something new. If you were in a job that you didn't like particularly and you can see opportunities to do something else, there's still like a project. So you could be a project manager who's come into something and you're not really entirely happy with the way it's playing out, but you can only influence it bit by bit and you do have to see it through because it's important to your reputation and your brand to see it through. Then you're free to do the next thing. But there's a little bit of the Ayn Rand, I want to, I want to just crash through or crash energy around your career at the moment. So let's see what it, the impact is on your personal brand. Okay. One of the reasons why this fierce independence is operating is for you, ultimately, it's the thing you're known for. And there's something at the moment going on, I'd say, around something that you have to finish that you, you are in two minds about, you're not really happy with the way it's going, but you kind of know that if you sort of left it too quickly, you really get to the halt. So you literally know if you said, I'm not getting the recognition for what I'm really independently bringing to this, so that's it, I'm out, I'm walking. You know that there are financial things there, that you would have a halt to the finances. So you might be comfortable with that and you might part of your brand might be, you know, there are, there are certain things I won't negotiate away. But I think that in this situation, you kind of know that's not really going to help. It's, it's more that you have to, whatever this is at the moment, see it through because there is almost a little bit of a thing around your personal brand about that you might walk, you know, just because of this independence. And so will people see you as reliable? I just feel that there is something around, are you a flight risk for a job or something like that? Will you fulfill all your obligations if you feel that your independence is being held back so it there's a real sort of sense of wanting to to fly earlier but you know the impact on your on the, your personal brand if you did this you are aware of that 
and you know you're ultimately going to come out okay. But I think you'll be more careful than maybe you, you kind of instinctively want to be. So let's see the impact of the external world on this at the moment. Okay, there's something about the environment that you're in that is, is not it's not a happy environment, I've got to say. <clears throat> there's sort of like a sense of some financial limitations anyway. So you might be thinking, am I going to have the return on investment? I want to go off and do this other thing. But you kind of also know that you may not ultimately get to do this other thing if you're seen to not see this through. So you're kind of caught in, a, in an interesting sort of situation. Or it could just be you want to go to a new job, but you've got to find one first. And so you're just going to have to put up with this because you can't have money stopping completely. But there's something in the environment that you're in where people are disappointed, they're not happy, the, the, the industry has some issues around it. It's coming out of a period of that, so it's getting better. So this is why you can probably see the light on the horizon. But there's, there's been something, there's been limitations to the industry. So if you were an entertainer, for instance, the, the pandemic, you know, if you, if you were watching this, you know, in 2022, the pandemic you know, would, had stopped a lot of sort of entertainment options for a long period of time. And, and that's now starting to sort of release. So there could be something around that and like fulfilling obligations now under those circumstances where you want to go off and do something else. That's if you are in entertainment or fashion or design or something. But if you're in sort of a more conventional job, there's something that's been going on, I'd say, around your industry or workplace. The worst is kind of pretty much over, but there's a, a general feeling of discontent. So you're just probably kind of picking that up and that's why you want to get free okay so let's get some advice for you let's get some career money and lifestyle advice first on a 3d level around your 10th house energies Procrastination, okay. Compromise. Preparation. Yeah, like I think you know you're going to have to compromise. You know you've got to sort of see certain things through. And it doesn't, you're not inspired with where you are at the moment by the looks of things. But you also know that you need to compromise. You know you don't want to sort of like be without a job, without money or whatever. But if you use some of this period of time to prepare for new opportunities and just sort of gradually sort of compromise and move through it, that will be fine. The only issue for you is not to get so sort of disconnected and discontented that the procrastination is the primary thing because then it's hard for you to prepare or, or do anything really. So, so if you can't, as the Knight of Swords, just crash or crash, you might sometimes just get stuck. So it's just worth thinking about this time as a time for preparation. Financially, we have capital and insight. Okay, so I think that you're going to see as you go through this that there are opportunities for money and, and other ways to get a windfall and, and to sort of use this period of time and this frustration to work out the insights to, to build your capital, build your the capital financially and also the capital of your personal brand, your personal capital. Let's have a look at lifestyle and how that impacts this. Argument, okay. This is the Ayn Rand thing, kind of like I want to have the argument, you know, like it's, it's a bit of a default for you. And baggage. Yeah, because you don't, you don't want to carry baggage. You'd rather have the argument and clearly, I think one of the issues for you is because you are so strong and so prepared to take the, the argument. You do need to understand not everybody is as strong as that. I think for you, having an argument clears the air, gets rid of the baggage. But I think there's something about the environment you're in at the moment. You can't move as quickly as you would like. You'll get there eventually, but you can't now. So you're probably going to have to carry a bit of that baggage and not have the argument. Because you, if, if you, Beyonce is strong, fierce, independent, but isn't sort of like naturally arguing all the time, Ayn, Ayn Rand sort of feels like the crash through or crash. And that's not a good energy for you at the moment. Okay, so let's have a look at career advice for you. Business advice. Feng Shui, redecorate your home and office using Feng Shui. I think this might be, you know, what are the compromises that you can do? How can you get energy flowing in a way that is, is good for you and that kind of unsticks what's stuck and makes you feel in control of things and able to design your life a bit more if you're feeling a bit stuck? 
and hire help. Okay, so if you get capital, if you have the capacity, get people to do the things that bore you, you know, <laughs> rather than you having to do those so that you've got a bit more creative freedom and you're not, you don't procrastinate on things because you've got people to do the bits that aren't really your strengths or the things that you like to do. Let's look at creativity because you're a highly creative person, I think, in whatever job you do. So what's the creative energy around you? Mind, so what you think about. And Ayn Rand's very mind-oriented. It's a lot about design for you. If you're an entertainer, you're clever, you're quick, you, you have a point of view. And camouflage, you might need to hide some of that mind at the moment, though, creatively, because it may not be the thing that's going to finish off what you need to do or even bring the next gig in for you. So there's just sort of something about when do you use Ayn Rand and when do you use Beyonce, I think. Okay, let's look at spiritual energy, see if that gives a little bit of a clue. Unearth the earth. You are part of the process of unearthing the roots of fear from humanity to an awakened consciousness. So this is where the mind works well, and this is where your sort of your your fierceness is important, using it to unearth truths, to get proper messages across or whatever. But the earth is also a bit slower, you know, like you have to unearth these things in a bit of a more slow way than is your natural natural sort of approach. And home, an exciting change in home or lifestyle brings positive improvements and new energy. And that may connect to Feng Shui. If you can't change anything else right now, maybe change the sort of like the decor, the design, the energy of where you live, maybe who you live with. There could be change that you can do there while you're waiting on the sort of freedom from whatever this responsibility is that it looks like you're dealing with. So to bring it all together, we're going to use the Crystal Chakra cards to get some affirmation energy for you, some astrology energy, and then the Astro Chakra cards to close out the reading. So firstly, what kind of chakra area should you focus on? The third eye, so your sort of psychic spiritual connection to others. And the third eye, yeah, it's all about that. And this is the feng shui, the connection and so forth. I feel I feel like that veers more towards Beyonce than Ayn Rand, but that might be unfair to Ayn Rand. It's just a, a gut instinct I have, which is more about the connection and the communication and the entertainment than just the philosophy and the argument. It feels like connection rather than argument. So there's two third eye chakra crystals here. One is Tanzanite, which is about stillness and cosmic consciousness. The affirmations are, I align myself with cosmic consciousness. So yeah, because there's something, something like that's almost home to you. The cosmos is sort of home to you. And I find stillness within, and you probably need to find that because you really want to get into the battle and you've got to wait a bit. Then we have blue chalcedon, chalcedony, self-perception and lightheartedness. I sometimes allow myself to be carefree. Yeah, be fun. You know, it doesn't always have to be, have, have the fun end of this. And I change my perspective to increase my understanding. Yes, it's like thinking about like what is fun and alive and creative and so forth might be a way to sort of get you through what is a bit of a block until you are more able to, again, express yourself creatively. Okay, let's see the astrology energy around your 10th house at the moment, pile four. Fire, yeah, there's the creative energy. Fifth house, creative energy and love, potentially the right love relationship. Libra, bringing things into balance, balancing all that creative energy, I think, with the ambition and so forth. And Pluto, transforming and so forth. Yeah, this is because you are transformative. I mean, like both of those energies are quite transformative in their different ways. But you need to you need to get into balance so that it doesn't overwhelm you or others, I think, because there's a lot of power. You have a lot of power and a lot of creative energy. Okay, let's finish off with three Astro Chakra cards just to bring it all together. We have the Sacral, oh, no it's not the Sacral, the Solar Plexus Chakra, we have the Heart Chakra, and we have the Third Eye Chakra again. You're very spiritually connected. Very, even though I think you probably think of yourself as creative more than anything with a little bit of philosophy, you're very spiritually connected with all this Third Eye stuff. With the solar plexus chakra of Venus, empowering relationships. I do think for some of you, there's a love relationship that's going to really help with this. And so, and and you may be wanting to be free to spend more time with that person right from the beginning, those those first sort of 
uh, tarot cards around your career could have suggested that. And then we have the heart chakra and we have the moon associated with that. So you have an emotional response to things. So even when you think you're going into war because really everything's stuck and it just needs to be freed or you're designing things and, and you're being entertaining, really there's an emotional underpinning to all of this. And just getting in touch with that I think will be helpful. And I think your intuition, the third eye, will help with that. And that's help with how you communicate with others and expand your knowledge about what the possibilities are, what the compromises are, how you can prepare and move forward so that you can free yourself more. Because I think for you, this is going to be a bit of a pattern in your life, as I say, because you are fiercely independent and there's nothing wrong with that. You're also incredibly entertaining and compelling and attractive to people. So you're going to find yourself sometimes where people don't want you to move on or leave or change and you want to change. So you just need to find the way through that. And I think you're right in the middle of that at the moment. You know, as I say, if you're an entertainer, you could be in some sort of contractual negotiations at the moment where you want to free yourself and you just know you're going to have to have to still do some product until a time when you can be free, but you'll get there. But it's 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 something very compelling about you because of your power, but also because of your sort of like charisma as well. But you do have to self-regulate within because sometimes, as I say, you're in jobs or contracts where it takes a little bit longer to be the completely iconoclastic, you know, sort of individual, you know, the, the, you know, the sort of original individual that I think you are. So I hope that this makes sense to you. I hope it's helpful. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. I hope I see you in other You Through the Houses series. If you're seeing this when it's first published, there's two more months to go after this for the 11th and 12th house. If you're seeing it in 2023, then there's a whole suite of them. But as they're published, they're all put in a playlist. So everything that's been published to date is in a playlist. So at this point, if you are seeing it when it's published, that's also all the houses one through to nine if you haven't seen those yet and you're interested. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future more general pick-a-card readings.